The SMM mobile oil station is designed for treatment of transformer oils. It removes mechanical impurities, as well as water and gases, from electric insulation oils. The station is used during installation, repairs and operation of oil field equipment with voltage rating up to 1150 kV. The station is a containerized unit containing all assemblies and components inside. The station is installed on a double axle trailer. The container has the following design features. Opening doors on three sides, gas springs installed for door opening mechanism, light in your work area for servicing and operation in dark hours, ease of maintenance. Adequate flow of air is provided for operation in hot conditions. Reliable door locks to secure doors for transportation. Comfortable handle position for opening of the doors. Ventilation openings to prevent condensation inside the equipment. Durable paint coat providing reliable protection against the elements. The unit features vacuum column. The vacuum column assembly provides for fine atomization of the oil and has the following features. A highly efficient activator filter. High surface area of oil treatment. Stable oil treatment parameters. Removal of soft water to 2 ppm. Reduction of gas content to 0.1%. Vacuum control automation and control system allows for automatic control of oil level in the vacuum column control and monitoring of vacuum pumps, protection of vacuum column from oil overflow. The vacuum column also features a side glass with effective lighting by an LED light, which allows to visually monitor transformer oil treatment and condition of the activator filters. Oil input pump, oil output pump, coarse filter with increased filtration area, fine filters. The filter section allows for filtration fineness of one micron Industrial Purity Class 9. It is easy to maintain, has large oil treatment area, stable oil treatment parameters, allows for visual monitoring of filter contamination. Oil trap with reservoir which features protection of vacuum system from oil, protection of vacuum column from foaming, provision for entry of air during transformer oil treatment, possibility to drain oil from the receiver without stopping the treatment process. The oil trap features a solenoid valve to allow entry of air during an automatic mode of operation. Oil heater. The oil heater allows for adjustment of oil heating power. It features highly effective bent heaters, ease of maintenance, stable oil heating parameters, and visual oil heating control. Automation devices are installed at the output of the oil heater, which allow to control and visualize the operation temperature of oil heating protection from overheating, control of oil flow presence in the heater, adjustment of heating temperature for the required mode. A system of pipelines with valves with the following features. Fast connection of oil input and output lines with fast locking connections. Comfortable oil drain from the station for maintenance. Comfortable location of pipeline connections. Clear identification of valves with brief explanatory notes. Vacuum pump section. The vacuum pump section consists of four vacuum pumps, three four vacuum pumps, and a vacuum booster. The vacuum pump section is connected to the vacuum column and the trap by a vacuum line with stop valve. Vacuum pump exhausts lead to the collector and then to the back wall of the container. Transformer vacuumizing connector. The vacuum system has the following features. Booster operation is interlocked with four vacuum pumps. Control of safe booster start. Protection of the vacuum pump section from operator error. Control cabinet, which allows for either manual or semi-automatic mode of operation. Protection of equipment from operator error. Ease of setting oil treatment process parameters. Ease of maintenance. Visual control oil treatment. Oral vacuum brake alarm. Possibility to connect additional equipment or lighting to an external socket. There are several safety rules when operating the unit. Study the manual before starting and operating the unit. Failure to observe the rules in the manual may lead to damage to equipment or injury to personnel. When operating the unit, the operators must use personal protection gear.
Before starting the unit, check the correct connection to the electric power source. Operating the unit with open control cabinet is prohibited. When operating the unit, exercise caution to avoid burns when touching hot pipelines. For more safety rules, refer to the operations manual. The unit must be installed on a flat, hard, horizontal surface. When installing the unit, ensure space for maintenance, pipeline and electric conditions and safe operation is available. Activate the parking brake. Use the supports around the perimeter of the unit to adjust the unit to horizontal position. The doors open by gas springs, so be careful while opening the doors, hold them down to avoid injury. Connect the unit to electric supply by a 5-wire cable with main wire cross-section of 120 mm squared. Connect the input and output oil hoses. Check oil levels in vacuum pumps. If the amount of oil is not sufficient, add more oil. For oil type, refer to the operations manual. Turn on power supply to the unit and ensure correct phase connection. To do so, turn the main switch handle and reset the emergency stop push button if necessary. The power light will come on if phases are connected correctly, otherwise the phase control light comes on. When the unit is turned on, light and oral alarm starts, the oil flow indicator lamp is off. To reset the alarm, press sound signal pickup button. The principle of operation is based on thermovacuum treatment of transformer oils through fine dispersion of the oil in the vacuum column, facilitated by activator filters, which allow for increased oil treatment surface area. The unit may operate in the following modes Transformer oil degassing Heating of transformer with hot oil and Vacuumizing the transformer Turn the power supply switch handle to power the unit Reset emergency stop button if necessary When the unit starts, light and oral alarm will go off The oil flow lamp will not light up In this case, press sound signal pickup button, which should be unblocked after stable oil flow is achieved, which is indicated by the light oil flow. The low level light indicates no oil in the lower level of the vacuum column. The vacuum brake light indicates that the pressure in the column is above 270 Pascal and or the pressure before the blower is above 1000 Pascal. The low vacuum before booster indicates that the pressure before the blower is above 3000 Pascal. The no oil on inlet pump indicates no oil at unit inlet. L5 sensor light is also off. Sequentially start vacuum pumps VP1, VP2 and VP3 and open gas ballast valves of the pumps located on the top part of the pumps. Open vacuum pump 1 cutoff valve V21. Open vacuum pump 2 cutoff valve V22. Open vacuum pump 3 cutoff valve V23. Open vacuum line stop valve V18. Open oil trap reserve valve V16. And when the pressure in the vacuum line before the vacuum pump is below 3000 Pascal, start the vacuum pump VP4 and let the pumps work for 30 minutes. After preparation and warm up of the vacuum section, close stop valve B18 and stop the vacuum pump VP4. After complete stop of the pump VP4, stop the pumps VP3. VP2 and VP1. 
To fill the inlet hose and the pump V1 with oil, open the following valves. Vacuum column oil cutoff valve V3. Input pump supply adjustment valve V2. And input gate valve V1. Fill the pump V1 with oil. Close the input pump supply adjustment valve V2. When the system is filled with oil, the L5 sensor trips, the no oil in inlet pump light goes off. If air is accumulated in the coarse filter, which may be observed through the side glass, it should be released by opening the release valve on the cover of the filter. Start oil pump V1. To prevent rapid pressure increase in the system, gradually open input pump supply adjustment valve V2 to 50%. Close the vacuum column oil cutoff valve V3 to 50% and fill the column system and the vacuum column with oil to mid-level L2. The low level light will go off when the L2 level is reached. Close the input pump supply adjustment valve V2, stop the pump V1, open the output pump bypass valve V9 and open the internal oil circulation valve V6, open the vacuum column release valve, and release vacuum in the vacuum column. Close valve V10. Start the pump V2, after which gradually open the output pump supply adjustment valve V5 until the flow relay trips, and close the output pump bypass valve V9. After circulation is established, check if the heating switch off button is unlocked, and start the oil heat resection heating 1. Heat to plus 50 degrees centigrade temperature. Heating is controlled by a thermistor sensor located near the heater. The signal from the sensor goes to the T1 oil outlet device. It should be considered that heating will not start in the following cases. If the button heating switch off is pressed. If the T1 oil outlet device settings are exceeded. If thermostat settings are exceeded overheated oil lamp is on. If the oil is not flowing, oil flow lamp is off. Start vacuum pumps VP1, VP2 and VP3. Gradually opening the vacuum line stop valve V18 to vacuumize the column to 3000 Pascal pressure while controlling foam formation in the column. Do not allow foam to rise above the middle of the side glass. To do so, momentarily slightly open vacuum column release valve V10 and slightly close the valve V18. When pressure in the column reaches 3000 Pascal and no foaming is present, start the pump VP4 and vacuum mines the column until the end of intensive gas emission and pressure of 100 PA or less. To discharge treated oil from the vacuum column, open oil output valve V7. Close internal oil circulation ball valve V6. Start oil pump V1. Open input pump supply adjustment valve V2 and send untreated oil into the unit. Adjust input pump supply valve V2 and output pump supply valve V5 to set stable oil level in the column. If the temperature of the oil entering the vacuum column is below 50 degrees centigrade, start the second heating section, heating 2. Watch pressure in the system while operating. High pressure, 4 to 5 bar, may indicate incorrect valve position. Differential pressure of 2 bar and above on filter inlet and outlet indicates filter clogging and the need to replace the filter. To stop operation, stop oil heater, switching off all sections. Press heat and switch off button. In 5 minutes, close the input pump supply adjustment valve V2. Stop oil pump P1. Close vacuum chamber oil cutoff valve V3 and inlet gate valve V1. When the oil reaches lower level in the vacuum column, the output pump P2 stops. 
At this time, close the output pump supply adjustment valve V5 and outlet valve V7 and stop output pump P2 by pressing the button on the control panel. Close vacuum valve V18 and stop vacuum pump VP4. After complete stop of the pump VP4, close vacuum pump VP1 shutoff valve V21, vacuum pump VP2 shutoff valve V22, vacuum pump VP3 shutoff valve V23, and stop vacuum pumps VP3, VP2, and VP1. Turn the main switch on the control cabinet and disconnect power from the unit. Turn the power supply switch handle to power the unit. Reset emergency stop button if necessary. Open oil input gate valve V1. Wait several minutes until P1 pump is filled with oil. Observe course filter PF oil indicator and tripping of level sensor L5. If L5 does not trip, release air through the air release valve of the course filter PF. Start oil pump P1. Open output pump supply adjustment valve to 75%. Open transformer heating mode valve V4 and oil output valve V7. After oil flow relay trips, turn on the oil heater, making sure the heating switch off button is unlocked. Then all heating sections may be engaged. Control the temperature, observing temperature controller readings. After completion of operation, switch off all electric heating. In 5 minutes, close valves V2, V4 and V7. Stop oil pump P1 and close gate valve V1. Turn main switch handle on the control panel and disconnect power supply from the unit. Connect vacuum hose to transformer vacuum connector equipment vacuumizing. Start sequentially vacuum pumps VP1, VP2 and VP3. And open gas ballast valves. Open vacuum pump VP1 shutoff valve V21. Vacuum pump VP2 cutoff valve V22. Vacuum pump VP3 shutoff valve P23 and stop valve on the transformer. When vacuum line pressure before the vacuum pump VP4 is below 3000 Pascal, start vacuum booster VP4. Pull the required level of vacuum on transformer. Control vacuum pressure observing the indication of vacuum meter VR2. To stop the process, close transformer gate valve and stop VP4 pump. After complete stop of the pump VP4, close the vacuum pump VP1 shutoff valve V21, vacuum pump VP2 shutoff valve V22, vacuum pump VP3 shutoff valve V23, and stop pumps VP3, VP2, and VP1. Then close gas ballast valves on pumps VP1, VP2, and VP3. Turn the main switch handle on the control panel and disconnect power supply from the unit. 